How's it going everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video today is going to be a continuation on the Merck timing chain videos that I have done. So this will be the third installment in this playlist. If you haven't already, go back and check videos one and two which show the fault that presented also the failure that occurred and now in this third installment it is the timing chain. What I'm going to be showing in part one of this video is the timing chain removal with the camshaft adjusters, how you separate the chain, how I did it in the workshop, the tool I used and what's involved in it. There isn't a lot of information out there on the separation of the timing chain on these vehicles. I have found when I looked after doing this job that I couldn't actually see anybody show close up how that timing chain is separated and then how it's put back together again. Uh, I'm gonna make this into two parts and this first installment is gonna be getting in there, removing the chain, seeing me separate it, and then in part two, you're gonna see me uh, install the chain with the new camshaft adjusters and how I set it all up afterwards. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Before I jump into the voiceover step-by-step -step stage on this video, I just want to get you up to speed on where I am and where the job is setting as I do that. So firstly, I already have the vehicle all timed up. The timing marks are all aligned. I have the camshaft special tool uh, locker in place. That's kept in place by the rocker cover Torx head bolts that I use. So you use two of the rocker cover uh, torques to um, keep that camshaft locker in place. I have removed the timing chain tensioner and the camshaft adjusters are about to come out. Now to remove the camshaft adjusters you're also going to need a special tool which is the T100 Torx. That is to remove the camshaft adjuster oil control valves. That is what's keeping those in place. And to remove those, I also highly recommend you get a slim 32mm head spanner to hold on the end of the cam so it keeps it nice and solid. I get another teammate to hold that 32mm while I loosen the T100s. Okay, with that said, let's get into the step-by-step -step play on this. So I've got the T100 on the end of my long ratchet. I have a teammate holding that 32mm and I'm loosening off the intake side and then switching over the 32 mil on the other and I'm telling them to keep tension against it because we don't want any pressure on that camshaft and then it, these are extremely tight by the way as well uh, there is two different newton meter settings on the different engines one is 90 and the other is over 100 uh, this particular engine is over 100 that these get uh, tightened down so I have it loosened off now, so I don't need um, anyone else's help from this stage onwards. That 32 mil um, spanner that I'm using there is actually a regular one that I had got, but I ground down the head net to suit this. I know there is some um, uh, drive belt ones out there, I believe, that have a slim head. I didn't have one, uh, and I had that spanner to suit. Uh, that is a spool valve. Uh, or the control valve, the oil control valve uh, that has come out on the intake side and I am taking it out here on the exhaust side. Now, uh, remember I have the timing chain tensioner already removed and I have the cam uh, lockers in place before I got to this stage. You'll see there that I have all these little clamps around. That was to uh, keep the chain in, uh, in position as I'm removing these. I do mess about and uh, change that up using these uh, needle nose vice grips uh, and later on I use some cable ties as well. You can use pretty much whatever is suitable for you just to keep the chi timing chain uh, tension uh, so it doesn't fall down into the timing cover. This is me removing the exhaust side now. I remove that clamp on the lower side so it's able to be uh, tilted and lifted out of position. I then re-put in the clamp uh, just where the guides are and then I uh, put a clamp on the top side of the cam. 
Now it's all in position, you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. But the next process I decide to do is I need to create an area that is safe for delinking the chain. This is what I come up with. You can come up with whatever uh, method you want. But I was very conscious of not dropping anything into the timing cover. So I thought uh, a cardboard cutout with the angle slanting away from the timing cover, should any of the links... Um, uh, separate or I drop any tool or anything breaks away it's not going to fall into the uh, timing cover area that was why I set it up like this it also puts a nice bit of tension on the chain and we get a clear visibility now using the special tool here um, you put it so there's two pins in either link that you need to push back and you need a 13 mil a spanner and a 19 mil. I'm using the 19 mil here to apply the initial bit of pressure on the pin. Now that I'm happy with it sitting centrally, I can use the 13 mil and start to apply the pressure. Uh, I don't have a very clear image here, but I will insert some images of me just doing this and the workbench as well, which gives a, a very clear idea as to what I'm doing. Um, you just keep applying the pressure until you feel it push back and it's nice and flush. Uh, at this stage, I decide I'm just going to cable tie the right hand side um, for when I delink it, it'll still have tension on both sides of the chain and I'll be able to just remove the center link and leave the chain in position. That is... <clears throat> And that is me um, moving on to the second link. So I have, if you can see there where I'm pulling, you can see that I have created a flush on the uh, front side and the pin is now protruding uh, through the back. I have to repeat the process on the second link, which is on the right hand side here. And once I have that done, it will give me uh, enough room where I'm able to take uh, the link apart then so same process again we apply uh, some pressure just to sit on it with the 19 mil and then I'm getting a 13 mil spanner and I'm pushing pushing it through while holding on the handle and trying to keep it as steady as possible uh, viewpoint is not amazing in this position and um, I am using the tool upside down to do it. I found this was the best way for me personally to be able to delink the chain. And like I said, um, I haven't seen anybody else uh, have any videos on doing this, but I found this process to work uh, very well for me. And it was nice and safe in regards to having everything covered up from uh, creating any um, dirt or debris falling down in the timer cover. If you can see there, you can see the two um, pins are pushed back now. And what I decide to do is get a vice grips on the back side of the pin, just so I have a stability um, where I can kind of rock on the front. Uh, I did that a little bit before I got my flat screwdriver and then I'm just removing the outer part. So that actually slid out of my hand and ended up on the floor and this is the second part of that link so that's the inner part but this chain can now be separated because I have removed both of them so you'll see me here grab on the vice grips and I'm able to just pull that back and we have now delinked that chain uh, this is the outer part that slid off uh, slid down the cardboard and on to the floor I just use my magnet to pick it up and I keep that separate because I end up using that again when I'm uh, putting the old one on to the new one. I move uh, the chain back out of position and then I'm able to just remove the cardboard. You can kind of see the uh, layout now. It has finally been uh, delinked and that is a step-by-step -step guide on how you do that. If you look just directly down there, I have pushed on the pin. I'm going to move this camera now to give you a real close up. And then we simply rotate, tighten this down.
and it's already compressing just down here. We look just there we can see that the pin has been pushed down it's now flush whereas this one is raised and you can see where it's kind of capped at the edges there so that's what we're going to do um, with the second link we're going to just second pin move this over here and then we're going to push this down once you have those two push back out of position, you'll be able to pop off that link. You can see how these ones are now flush. That one needs to go down a tiny bit more really, but we should be able to pop this link off. See the way they're nice and raised. This is flush. And if you look on the underside, you can see how they're pushing all the way through. They're nice and raised up. So the next thing you're gonna see me do is pop this off now. And that is how you de-link the chain. And that is all for this video, guys. That is how you de-link the chain. In part two, I'm gonna be showing you how you relink it with the old one to new one, cycle it through, how you connect the link up securely in place, and also how you set up the timing. So stay tuned for that. I will have that posted to this channel in the very near future. If you're interested in any of the tools that I used or the previous videos that I've done on this, all the relevant information will be posted in the description below. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got some useful information, found it informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.